Hi everyone, my name is Megan Turple and for my entomology presentation I chose to talk about insect pests of fruit trees and fruits. Entomology is the area of biology that focuses on the study of insects. Entomologists study insect physiology as well as their interactions with their environment. This information is important and very applicable to everyday life. In particular, this information is helpful when growing crops. You can find insects nearly everywhere feeding on plants, and this can become an issue when farmers are trying to grow good crops. A pest is considered an organism which causes nuisance to other organisms. Many insects cause damage to plant material and are therefore considered pests. Fruit trees are susceptible to pests because their fruit can be an important food source for the insects. The fruit contains sugar, which provides insects with the energy they need to crawl, fly, and reproduce. There are many insects that act as pests to fruit trees. These include apple, cherry, pear, plum, peach, and apricot trees. In Nova Scotia, Canada, apples are a very popular crop, and there are several apple orchards located throughout the province. There are also many apple tree pests that can cause problems if farmers do not take the proper precautions to ensure healthy pest-free farms. These include the apple maggot, the European apple sawfly, and the codling moth. The first insect I will talk about is Regolitis pomonella, more commonly known as the apple maggot. The apple maggot falls under the order Diptera and the family Tephrididae. It is a pest to apple trees, but has also been found to harm pear, plum, and cherry trees. This fly undergoes complete metamorphosis, starting off as an egg, hatching into a larva, and then becoming a pupa that finally results in an adult stage. Adults are typically 5 mm long, which is almost the size of a housefly. Their bodies are primarily black, with some exhibiting a yellow-colored head. They have banded wings, and these banding patterns can be used for identification against similar-looking fruit flies. The larva of this species is a typical maggot that is white and worm-like, with no distinct head. This species overwinters in their pupal stage in the soil and will emerge midsummer as an adult. A female will lay one egg per apple just beneath the skin of the apple to give their offspring a food source. These larvae hatch about a week later and begin burrowing into the apple to feed. After feeding and maturing over a period of 13 to 50 days, the larvae will wait until the apple has dropped to the ground before emerging and burrowing into the soil in preparation for their pupal stage and the cold temperatures. The apple maggot causes the infested apples to bruise and is often responsible for the apples dropping prematurely from the tree. These apples will have small tunnels through them and become soft and rotten. As you can see in these pictures, it's obvious that the larvae were tunneling through the apple. The second species I will introduce is Hoplocampa testudinia, commonly known as the European apple sawfly. The European apple sawfly is an insect from the order Hymenoptera family Tenthridinidae. Its name is a misnomer, it is actually a wasp. But because it moves around between apple trees like a fly would, it was incorrectly named a fly. It is characterized by having a dark brown colored body with a yellow to orange color on the head and legs. These wasps can grow to be 7 to 8 millimeters long and they exhibit complete metamorphosis. The larvae are a light cream color with a dark head. Their life cycle is similar to that of the apple maggot. In spring, the new adults emerge from their pupal stage in the ground after overwintering. They begin to emerge once the apple blossoms appear as they feed on the apple pollen. The females will lay one egg per blossom and will deposit the egg deep into the flower. After approximately two weeks, the larvae hatch and burrow underneath the skin of the young fruit present. They feed on the apple and move into the seed cavity to feed on the seeds. When mature, they emerge from the apple most often after it drops to the ground, and they emerge from an opening that they will fill with a reddish-brown excrement called frass. The mature larvae then enter the soil to overwinter. The European apple sawfly larvae are responsible for causing the most damage. The larvae tunneling through the fruit causes visible scars on the outside of the fruit and enough damage on the inside to cause the apples to drop prematurely. 
Their large exit hole that they fill with frass also lowers the aesthetic value of the fruit. As you can see in these pictures, it was clear that the larvae were tunneling, and the top right picture is their exit hole that they have filled with frass. The final species I will introduce today is Cydia pominella, commonly known as the codling moth. The codling moth is an insect from the order Lepidoptera and family Tortricidae. This moth is primarily a pest of apple trees, but has also been noted to attack plum and pear trees as well. These moths are a mixture of brown and gray colors and tend to be approximately 10 to 12 millimeters long. They have a copper colored spot located located at the very end of the forewings. Like the previous insects, the codling moth also has complete metamorphosis. Depending on the age of the larva, the caterpillar body can range between a white color in younger larvae to a pinkish color in mature larvae. Mature larvae have dark brown or black heads. This species overwinters in cocoons that can be found beneath the soil, under bark, or in the cracks and crevices of trees. The new adults emerge from their cocoons throughout May and June. Mating occurs and then females lay a single egg on each new fruit or on a leaf near the fruit. After about 10 days, the larvae will hatch and break through the skin of the apple and begin to burrow to the core to eat the seeds. They will spend approximately three weeks on the apple feeding and then will exit the apple to find a place to enter its pupal stage for the winter. Like all the other insects discussed so far, it is the larval stage that is the main culprit causing damage to the apples. The larvae create tunnels through the apple leaving excrement or frass behind. This weakens the internal structure and encourages the apples to fall prematurely. Creating these tunnels and filling them with frass also leaves the apples more vulnerable to bacterial infections and fungi. The codling moth also causes outside damage by creating stings on the outside surface of the apple left behind from feeding. If left untreated, these moths can cause damage between 50 and 90 percent of the apple orchard. As you can see in the two pictures to the left, uh, there was burrowing going on and frass left behind. And on the bottom right, you can see the stings that the moths have created. Because these pests can be detrimental to apple trees and therefore quite costly for farmers, it's important to figure out ways we can keep these pest populations under control. For many farmers that are concerned with mass production, the easiest method for ensuring these insect pests stay away from their crop is by using a chemical pesticide. This method tends to be favored by large farms because application of a chemical spray can be accomplished by flying a small plane across the orchard and spraying the entire field in one trip. These insecticides are often desirable as well because they only require application a few times throughout the growing season. Some common chemicals used to deter and kill these pests include thiacloprid, spinterum, diazinon, and chlorantronilipril. These pesticides target the eggs and larvae in an attempt to break the pest's life cycle. The only downfall to this method is the concern for contaminating the apples with these chemicals. Many people do not like the idea of consuming products that have had poisonous agents sprayed on them. In an attempt to steer clear of applying chemicals, there are manual methods of clearing out the pests. One method that seems to be quite popular is the use of sticky paper traps to catch adult insects flying through the trees. These sticky sheets are hung on the branches of the trees. In the case of the codling moth, there are specific traps that can be set up where the traps are equipped with the female pheromone, which attracts male moths to the trap. These males get stuck in a sicky substance, preventing them from finding females to mate with. The goal of this method is to lower the number of matings and ultimately the number of eggs and maggots produced. There are also similar pheromone traps used with the European apple sawfly, where a small red sphere resembling an apple contains an attracting pheromone that draws the wasps in. One specific tactic used by some farmers is called perimeter trapping. This involves the hanging of these traps on the trees that make up the perimeter of the orchard. This prevents any possible apple maggots, apple sawflies, or codling moths from gaining access into the rest of the field. 
This is a simple idea, but may be time consuming to hang and replace traps on a regular basis. Another simple way to keep the pests under control is to clean up apples that have rotted and fallen to the ground. All of the pests I have mentioned cause apples to drop from the tree before they are ripe and ready for harvesting. Therefore, many of the apples that are scattered on the ground are likely infested with insect larvae. To keep the larvae from burrowing into the ground, timely collection of these fallen apples and proper disposal can be a simple solution. Although this is simple, it likely requires frequent cleanup of apples in order to be effective. Finally, there is also the option to use a biological control. This requires introducing another organism, typically a natural predator, to prey on the pests you are targeting. For the apple sawfly, farmers have used another wasp species that is parasitic, the trichogramma species. This tiny species of wasp parasitizes other insects by laying its eggs into the pest eggs. When these parasitic eggs hatch, they make their way into the pest eggs and kill them before they hatch into larvae. This has become quite a popular method of control, so much so that there are farms that specifically raise trichogramma species to sell to other farmers. One other organism that has been used to control the codling moth is the nematode. These small invertebrates attack the larvae by infecting them with bacteria. This bacteria can kill the caterpillars and therefore break the life cycle of the moth. Finally, one other unique biological method that has been used is to plant neighboring plants around the apple trees that deter pests. Specifically, it has been found that when lavender and chives were planted near the base of the apple tree, codling moths were more likely to steer clear of the apples. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and I hope you were able to learn something new.